You've done this a thousand times, right? You look outside, you see it's raining, and you grab an umbrella. It's a simple if this, then that decision. Well, that's exactly how computers think. And over the next few minutes, we're going to teach our computer how to make those very same kinds of decisions using Java. So here's our game plan for today. We're going to kick things off by learning the computer's super simple yes or no language. Then we'll get our hands on the tools for comparing things and, you know, connecting different ideas. After that, we'll build some actual decision-making code. I'll show you a classic trap to avoid. And then, yeah, it's going to be your turn to give it a shot. All right, let's start at the very, very beginning. I mean, at its core, a computer's world is just incredibly simple. It doesn't get maybe, it doesn't do kinda. For a computer, every single question you can possibly ask it boils down to one of two answers, and only two, true or false. And this whole black and white concept, it's got a special name, a Boolean. Honestly, the best way to picture it is like a light switch. It's either on or it's off. There is absolutely no dimmer switch, no in-between. And you got to remember this. This simple idea of true or false is the only language our computer really understands. It is the bedrock for every single decision it's ever going to make. Okay, so we know the computer only speaks true and false. But how do we actually get it to give us one of those answers? Well, simple. We have to ask it a question. And to ask those questions, we need a special set of tools. We call them comparison operators. Now, these might look a little like math symbols from school, but just think of them as simple, direct questions. Each one is designed to give us that clean yes or no, that true or false answer. The double equals, for instance, is just asking, hey, are these two things exactly the same? The exclamation point with the equals, that's the opposite. Are these two things not equal? And then, of course, you've got the classics you already know, greater than, less than, and their buddies, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. Okay, let's see this in action, because it's actually really simple. We've got these little containers called variables. We've just told the computer, hey, put the number 10 in a box called A, and put the number 5 in a box called B. Got it? Good. Then we ask the computer our question, is A greater than B? The computer goes, okay, let me check. It looks inside A, sees a 10, looks inside B, sees a 5. Is 10 greater than 5? Yep. So it gives us its one-word answer, true. So our computer can now answer one simple question at a time. That's a fantastic start, but life's usually more complicated than that, right? What if a decision depends on more than just one thing? We need a way to chain these simple questions together to ask something a bit more uh, intelligent. And to do that, we have our next toolkit, the logical operators. First up is AND, which we write with two ampersands. Just think of AND as the really strict one. It's the bouncer of logic. It will only say true if every single part of the question is true. No exceptions. Then you've got OR, written with those two vertical lines. OR is way more chill. It says true if just one of the conditions is true. It's happy with that. And finally, there's NOT, the simple exclamation mark. It does exactly what you'd think. It just flips the final answer from true to false, or false to true. Let's go back to our weather example. To decide if it's good weather, maybe we have two rules. Rule one, the temperature has to be over 20 degrees. Rule two, it has to be sunny. We need both to be true, so we use our strict AND operator to connect them. So let's say it's 25 degrees. The first part is true, and the sun is shining. The second part is true. Since we have true and true, the whole thing becomes true. But what if it was cloudy? Well, that second part would flip to false, and because AND is so strict, the entire statement would immediately become false. All right, this is the moment we've been building up to. This is the whole point. We've learned the computer's language, true and false. We've got the tools to ask questions, and we know how to connect those questions. Now, let's finally put it all together and tell the computer what to do with the answers it gets. So, I want you to imagine our code is a bouncer at a nightclub. The rules are super clear. You have to be 18 or older, and you got to have your ID. So we use something called an if-else statement to write these rules. The if part is where the bouncer checks the conditions. If the final answer is true, if you meet all the rules, then the code inside the if block runs. You know, come on in. But if that condition is false for any reason, the computer completely skips that part and jumps straight to the else block, which says, sorry, access denied. And here's the cool part. This is exactly how the computer thinks it through, one step at a time. It doesn't see the whole picture at once. First, it looks at the first rule. Is their age 18 or greater? Let's say yes, so that's true. Okay, check. Then it moves to the second rule. Do they have an ID? Yep, true again. Check. 
Only then does it look at the AND connecting them and asks, what is true AND true? Well, the final answer is true, so the computer runs the IF block and our person gets into the club. Okay, I need you to pay close attention to this next part because I am about to save you from hours, maybe even days, of future headaches. There is one tiny, super easy mistake that has tripped up literally every single programmer when they were starting out. Let's make sure you see it coming from a mile away. Here it is. A single equals sign equals is for assignment. Think of it as a command. You're telling the computer, hey, put the value 5 into this box. It's an order. But a double equals sign equals equals is for comparison. That's a question. You're asking the computer, hey, just wondering, does this box already have the value 5 in it? See the difference? One is a command, the other is a question. Getting these two mixed up is, without a doubt, the number one mistake beginners make. Don't let it be you. Okay, that's all the theory we need for today. You now have the complete toolkit for teaching a computer how to think and make decisions. But listen, just watching this isn't enough. The only way this stuff is really going to stick is if you get your hands on the keyboard and actually try it yourself. So here are a couple of little challenges just to lock in everything we've talked about. First, I want you to write a bit of code that checks an age and prints out whether the person is an adult or minor. Simple enough, right? For the second one, let's build on our weather example. Write some code that checks if the temperature is over 30 and if it's sunny. And if both are true, just print a little message. Go ahead and pause right here and give it a real shot. And as we wrap this up, I really want you to see that this is so much more than just programming. It's, it's a whole new way of thinking about the world. I mean, think about it. Deciding what to wear in the morning, choosing what to watch on TV, figuring out the best way to get to work. Your brain is running these if this, then that checks constantly, all day long. So here's my final question for you. What's one simple decision you're going to make today that you can now break down step-by-step step using the same pure logic that a computer does?